All right. So uh, staying out west in the AFC, let's talk about the Broncos, who uh, today signed Jarek Stidham. Um, so they, that's their big news. Um, they've got some other free agents they've signed, if you want to talk about those. Yeah, this is actually exactly what the Broncos needed to do. And, of course, you get a guy like Sean Payton coming into the building. He's He's got a lot of experience, and he's going to know and tell the GM exactly what he wants to do. And I'm sure him and Russ have talked – Russ wants an offensive line, right? So you go pick up some offensive linemen and get Mike McGlinchey. He's one of the best offensive linemen in this class, not just tackles, not just right tackles. He's one of the best offensive linemen in this free agent class of offensive linemen. They go out, lock him up on a five-year deal for $87.5 million, $50 million of that is guaranteed. So locking up the right tackle position. You're also locking up a guy in Ben Powers, who's been with the Ravens uh, to start his career. He can play guard or center. You know, he, he's, he's a versatile guy in the middle of, of that offensive line. So Sean Payton has flexibility there. And, and he, they locked him up for four years, 52 million, 28 and a half of that being guaranteed. So again, a lot of flexibility on the cap uh, in that situation. And again, with Ben Powers being able to play any position in that front, he's going to have a lot of opportunity to do a lot of the things that Sean Payton that we've seen him do on offense with pulling guards and whatnot. He's only 26 years old, still a lot of athleticism, still a lot of tread on those tires. So I think those two signings and seeing what we're, we're kind of seeing what Sean Payton is wanting to focus on uh, in his first season with the Broncos. And I think this is exactly what they needed to start focusing on uh, early on in this free agency period. So a, a tale of two organizations. Uh, you, you see the confidence, you see the logic coming out of Denver, you see big changes happening, and uh, conversely, out of Vegas, um, there's not a whole lot of exciting stuff there to talk about. I think that may be indicative of the season to come out west, but we'll see, we'll see, uh, here in about six months. And, and before we move on from the Broncos, I thought it was interesting. I got a notification, an ESPN notification today, said that the Broncos have been discussing trades with Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, and Sutton. And I don't understand any of those. I don't understand why any three of those are even on the table. I don't know if they're trying to get draft picks to try to get wide receivers in this draft class or future draft class or, or what they're trying to do. Um, but I thought that that was that was weird news, but 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 that's huge news because those are a couple of really good wide receivers that could potentially be on the market. Um, but I just think with Sean Payton coming in, is it something Sean Payton really just wants to have his whole blueprint on the team? Does he want to go get guys, you know, maybe trade a Broncos wide receiver for a Saints wide receiver, you know, like a Michael Thomas? Like, I just thought it was interesting news that came out about the, the Broncos today, and I don't really understand it. Yeah, I you know, and I I don't have I don't have an answer. I, I mean, I have some some general insight. What I what I think, yeah, I mean, there could there could be a lot of reasons. One, um, there there's obviously some friction going on in the quarterback room last year. Um, I think I think that and the problem with leadership is <clears throat> is if Russell comes in and is being, you know, Russell and being, I don't know, being a prima donna, maybe not. I don't know. The guy makes a lot of money. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing in Seattle. He thought he could come there. Hackett let him do it. And then Hackett doesn't fix the problem and there becomes tension or strain. You know, they're losing. Guys are going to get pissed at each other. They're going to blame. And that's all leadership's responsibility to, to make all that go away and absorb that. And you'll hear a good leader you'll hear Bel Belichick you'll watch an old you can watch an old Patriots game where somebody clearly fucked up in the game and Belichick will say in the press conference that's all on me you know on Monday morning that wasn't the conversation he was having but with the press he was like it's on me I'm the coach it's all on me it's on me he he you know that's that's leadership and Hackett obviously didn't have it Hackett couldn't hack it see what he did there sorry so I would imagine I, I mean, going after the young guys could be a thing. Bringing bringing young guys now with the, the the particular skills that he wants to build around Russ, that's a very good possibility. It could be a personality strain and a problem. And if they were if they were bitching each other last year and they weren't getting along, and it's causing cohesion problems, maybe it's 
you know, and maybe they want out. I don't, I don't know. There's a, but there's a whole lot of things that come along with this when you're coming out of a toxic environment with a bad coach. Um, and so that's the point I want to make, because I don't want to speculate what's happening. I just think it's probably related to the disaster that happened last year and Peyton just trying to correct it now for the future. Maybe those guys went out, maybe Russ wants them out. Maybe, you know, Sean Payton sees it can't work a lot of different things, but um, certainly it's because of the, the, what he inherited. I, I'm sure there's one thing I can say. I'm excited to see how it turns out. You know, I'm a, I'm a coach's fan and uh, you know, I won't be on the Broncos bandwagon, but I will be watching and rooting. That's just the way I do things. I love to watch good coaches work. I really want this guy to turn this organization around and, uh, and watch it happen. And I think he will. Absolutely. Like I, I know a lot of Colts fans that don't like anything about the Saints, don't care about Sean Payton because, you know, the Saints beat the Colts in a Super Bowl. But like I feel like because Sean Payton is so awesome and he's such a good coach, like I never disliked the Saints. I was actually always rooting for the Saints. Like the fact that it was the Saints that we lost to in that Super Bowl and everything that the situation was like kind of helps soothe the pain of of losing that one like I've always liked Sean Payton so I, I'm I'm with you I'll, I'll be rooting for the Broncos I've always kind of liked the Broncos anyways I was always a, a big Terrell Davis fan so I'll be rooting for the Broncos to win the AFC West this year well and I heard a lot of people uh, a lot of Colts fans saying they didn't want Sean Payton to come to Indianapolis you know because they take that moral high ground like we're, we're some spectacular organization that we only have certain personality quality and they uh, well, he had uh, he paid bound the bounty gate. He paid money to have. He's a horrible per. Uh, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, who cares? He's one of the best coaches in the NFL. This is a business where winning is what you do. Like we yeah. need Sean Payton. <laughs> I, yeah, he, he got caught doing something that everybody else does. Not to make it right. I mean, the guy had to be paid his sins for it. Paid for his sins, and um, he's still one of the best coaches ever coached the game. So we're rooting for you. 